Dr. Austin, today we're talking about one-to-one -one correspondences. And in fact, I think that sometimes when solving these problems, what makes them hard is not necessarily the math, but the two sets that are involved. Sometimes they're hard to define. Sometimes they're hard to look up their sizes. Yes. Here's a prime example. Okay. This is straight out of the textbook. The Mindscape reads, is there a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of all U.S. residents and their social security numbers? Mm -hmm. Why or why not? Okay, so we're gonna have to define these two sets. Have you ever thought about what a U.S. resident is? Yes. Okay. But not all the students have, so let's make this clear. No, that's true. And in fact, as I was Googling, the IRS, this is fascinating, the IRS and the Department of Homeland Security have completely separate definitions, yes, so right? Yes, need to be clear. The Which IRS only cares about tax problem. revenue, and so they'll define it. Sometimes even corporations count as residents, and that's silly, right? Right. So I went with the Department of Homeland Security definition of a U.S. resident. They care about people. Yes. So we're going to count citizens, mm -hmm. and we're going to count permanent residents, also known as green card holders, and we're going to count all residents who are here on any kind of visa. I'm talking work visa, student visa, even tourist visa. If okay. you're living here temporarily, you count. You're a U.S. resident. All right. So that's our set of U.S. residents we're going to consider. That's okay. right. And on the other side, their social security numbers yes. that were there is very important, it right? Is. So I don't want to take the set of all nine-digit numbers as mm -hmm. a set of their social security numbers. They're not all in use, right? I am going to take the set of social security numbers that are currently legally assigned to an individual in this country. Okay. Just the ones that are in use, just the ones that are in use by someone living, because after all, after you pass away, they don't reassign your number, right? That's yours forever. So that is going to be my set of social security numbers for this problem. That's right. my choice. So we've got our two sets clearly defined. Absolutely. And now we're going to decide if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these set of U.S. residents you've just defined and their social security numbers. That's right. So now it's math time. Okay. So what does it mean for two sets to have a one-to-one -one correspondence? So for each U.S. resident, there would need to be one social security number. Okay. And for each of this set of social security numbers we just carefully defined, there would need to be one U.S. resident. One to one. So you can't have residents with no number. Right. You can't have numbers with no resident. Right. You can't have residents with more than one number. And you can't have numbers with more than one resident. Okay, those are our four ways we could go wrong. Four ways a correspondence could be broken. Now, technically, if you think the answer is no here, you only need to break one of these. Exactly. Right? So I'm going to be doing too much work here. I just want to make that well, clear. Well, I want to go through all the options. Okay. I'm absolutely going to go through all the options. Okay. So first, are there any U.S. residents who have no Social Security number? Well, both you and I are mothers. So That's we right. have young children. So we know that when babies are born, they don't immediately have a Social Security number in the U.S. You have to apply. Yes. You have to fill out an application. And that takes a little while to be processed. So Newborn babies, for sure, do right. not have a social security Right, that's right. Security. You don't get your card for like two weeks. That's one way. Okay. And then I found out there are whole communities in this country that have religious exemptions to the social security system. Uh -huh. And so they choose not to get social security numbers at all. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's an entire second class of residents. Yes. Finally... UT Austin has plenty of international students. We do. And if you come here to study and you're not planning on working a paying job, you don't need to have a social security number at all. That's right. So we have lots of people right we here on campus that don't have them. At least three types of residents that don't have a social Absolutely. Okay. Any one of these, if you wrote this down, you would be completely correct in saying there's no correspondence. Okay, so we know our answer, but let's continue working through all the other ways it could I think have gone so. wrong. So let's consider the second question. Are there any numbers over here that have no residents over here? Okay. So remember, I defined the set of Social Security numbers to be the numbers that were legally assigned to an individual. To living individuals. Living and residents. Exactly. And so now yeah. I'm asking, are there any numbers that aren't assigned to an individual? So I kind of think that's obvious. Like, right. no. Our definition of <laughs> set of SSNs restricted that here. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't going to help us answer the question. Are there residents that have more than one number. Hmm. And I think most of us, our first thought is uh, dishonest people or thieves, mm -hmm. but that's not entirely true. I don't know if you've ever met anyone who's been a victim of identity theft, yes. right? It's pretty common. And a lot of times, if your social security number is compromised, you, re you apply for a replacement number. The sure. government sends you a new one. 
So and there so might be a case where a U.S. resident could legally have two. Yes, okay. the government thinks both of those numbers are assigned to the same person, which is completely true. Yes. And in fact, I found a study where they found 21,000 U.S. residents in this country who were actually legally using both numbers. And okay. I don't think they were supposed to be, but it happens. So we definitely have people, residents, with more than one number. Yes. Finally, do you think there are numbers that have more than one resident attached to them? Well, by our definition, there should not be. By our definition? So I think, right, I think the way the system of Social Security is set up right. is supposed to be uniquely you, like your number is yours and we don't share. So I think that question's not gonna help us very much either. No. All right, so, so we, we know our answer. answer. Yes. yes, and so what are you choosing? What's your favorite reason? What are you gonna write down for this? Okay, I'm gonna say no, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between U.S. residents and their Social Security numbers. For example, newborn babies do not yet have their Social Security numbers. But that's just one right answer. Absolutely, there are many.